this church. Can you put that on this side of me, please? Thank you. I love this church. I was looking at my wife oh, a, a couple of days ago, and I, I just looked at her, and I, I said, when was the last time I told you how much I love you? And, uh, you know, we had some nice conversation there. And, uh, and she goes, you tell me you love me all the time. I know, but I love you. And I, it occurred to me the other day, I don't, I don't know how, when was the last time I told the church how much I love you. Even those of you that I don't know well or haven't introduced yourself to me yet, or I haven't gone out of my way to meet you yet, I love this church. And Lori and I consider it to be such a great blessing to be a part of this church and to serve here and, and to fellowship here. And uh, I just love the people in this church, and I love what God's doing in this whole Kingdom Builders venture of launching out and, and approaching the work of God here and around the world in a brand new way. So in just a few minutes, we're going to celebrate together our private uh, Kingdom Builders commitments for 2019, and we've been spending this month talking about our vision. Pastor Hooker talked on the first Sunday of the month about the heart of God, and then two weeks ago, I talked about saturating our city and what our vision is for that. He been hearing lots of people saying they're really starting to catch the heart of this, and last week, uh, my wife talked about uh, saturating our world with God's heart. And this morning, I want to talk about making our shots count. Making our shots count. And I believe God's going to stretch our hearts in faith. If you have a Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So for Christmas, my son, Danny, wanted a new camera. But it wasn't really a new camera. He wanted a new old camera. What I mean by that is he, he wanted an old-fashioned Canon 35 millimeter camera. By old-fashioned, I mean it uses that stuff that we used to call film. And I'm thinking, why? Why would you want that? The, the, the beauty, the dynamism of modern digital photography is you can take as many pictures as you want and there's no limit but the charm of an old fashioned camera is actually in the limitations it provides because when you've only got 24 shots per roll of film and when you're going to have to pay money to turn around and have those shots developed into prints so you can scan them into your computer <laughs> when you're when you're having to pay money for the film and you can only do so much, you make your shots count, each and every one of them. So this past week we were with him and he had his camera and, and it was just fascinating to me to watch how much time he'd take for even one shot because when you've got one shot, you want to get it right. I've been looking at my life the last few weeks and I... I try to do this evaluation. God, am I doing what you want me to do? God, am I doing it the way you want me to do it? Because God, I, I know I only get one shot at this life. Right now, every one of us, you and I, we're living our one and only life. And are we making our shots count? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 and 26. This is what the Apostle Paul says, and I'm looking at the NIV today. He says, everyone, say everyone, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So Paul is making a parallel between the, the competitive physical games, the races that they would have, and our spiritual journey. And he's saying they are doing it in order to get a crown win a, a, a small wreath that would be put on the head and that thing is going to fade away and die and rot. He says, but what we're doing is for, for something that will last forever. Making our shots count. So then in verse 26 he says this, therefore I do not run like someone who is running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer who is beating the air. In other words, I'm not just punching in the air, I'm making my shots count. Are you making your shots count in this one and only life? 
one of the things I sense God putting upon my heart more than ever before for Bellevue Christian Center is we're supposed to be about reaching the lost and discipling the found more than we ever have in our church's short 45-year history. That's what the heartbeat is. And so you're going to hear us talk more about reaching the lost in different ways throughout the course of the year. And even the retreat that's coming up, uh, the, the disciple retreat, is going to be about being a disciple and how do we effectively reproduce disciples in the world around us. So I can't say it any clearer than this. Make your shot count. Don't sit on the sidelines whining or complaining about the ref or the players or the coach or the game plan or criticizing the arena make your shot count make your shot count I find a lot of people that come to a certain place in their life and they just want to take a knee so to speak and just wait out the clock and I'm saying don't do that make your shot count and I know a lot of people have made New Year's resolutions and broken them already I won't ask for a show of hands I suppose my hand would be raised on that. How can I make my shot count in 2019 so I don't, don't end up with merely good intentions? And maybe you've asked yourself this, this question. I don't know how I can make my shot count because I failed so miserably. My life is filled with double bogeys. I'm here today to tell you, let's start in a new way. Let's look at what God's Word has to teach us about making our shots count. Would you take a moment and just pray with me? Father, I pray in these next few minutes we'll hear, hear a simple story from your word, and it will open our eyes in new ways, that it will open our heart in spiritual transformation, and that today you'll begin to lift up our vision and ignite a passion in our heart. God, we can't live with a community that is dying and going to hell. God, we cannot be content with seeing children and teenagers who have no spiritual frame of reference of Jesus Christ at all. But I pray, God, that you'll help us see a better place, a better city, a better world where Christ is known and Christ is loved and Christ is worshipped. And you'll let that happen through us. Let us be people, God, who make our shots count. That's our prayer. Amen. So I want to share a story with you, and it's coming from the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, chapter 13. It's a very short story, but it really gets to the heart of one making their shots count. Because it's a story of an individual who only reached maybe, maybe half of his potential, who only, who only reached out for maybe half of what God wanted him to do, and what God had specifically for his city. So the story is about a king named Jehoash, and he was responsible for all of Jerusalem, and he was the, the leader of the community. And there was a prophet in the land at this time named Elisha. Everybody say Elisha. Elisha was a godly man. Elisha was uh, a representative of the people Godward in prayer, and he was a representative of God to the people downward as the voice of God. Sometimes he would give encouragement. Sometimes he would give strong words. And Elisha was such a miraculous guy. He, had, he, had, he did twice as many miracles as his predecessor, Elijah, because he asked God for something big. He said, God, give me a, I want a double portion of the spirit that Elisha, Elijah has. And so Elisha lived his life in a miraculous way. In fact, in this, in this passage, right at the end of this passage, we read about where when Elisha actually died, he was buried. One day, some other guys were coming along, and they threw a dead man's body into the grave where Elisha's bones were. And Elisha was so miraculous in his life that when he was in death and there was nothing there but bones, this dead man's body just rubbed up against Elisha the prophet, and suddenly he sprang back to life again, this guy who just died. An amazing, miraculous man named Elisha. So 2 Kings chapter 13, and I'm starting at verse 14, and it says this. Now, Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. And Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. 
And the king was saying, My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel, which is a way of saying you're my spiritual leader. And it's a way of saying I know you're about to die. I can see, I can see heaven's, uh, heaven's parade coming to take you very soon. Fascinating, it's the same words that were spoken when Elisha's predecessor, Elijah, was on his deathbed as well. So the story here jumps kind of backwards and forwards a few times, kind of like, like m- movies or, or This Is Us kind of a TV show. So it says, this is the sickness from which Elisha died, but he wasn't dead yet, but he died, but he's going to die. We're going to tell you that in a little bit, but let's tell you a little bit about what happened right before he died. Elisha wanted to make sure this young king named Jehoash made his shots count. So here's the story, starting in verse 15. It's just a handful of verses. Elisha said this to Jehoash, the young king. He said, get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he'd taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window. And he opened it. Shoot, Elisha said. And he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram, Elisha declared. You will completely, everybody say completely. Say completely. You will completely destroy the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, take the arrows. And the king took them. Elisha told him, strike the ground. Now that expression, strike the ground, uh, is interpreted different ways by uh, different uh, commentators on the scriptures. Some mean seem to think, well, it must have meant he just took the arrows and hit the ground. Others understand it to be he continued to be shooting as the arrows struck his ground, struck the ground. I lean towards that direction, but in either case, the intention is the same. Uh, the young king had the bow in his hands, he had the arrows, and he had the opportunity. So Elisha said, strike the ground, and he struck it three times, and he stopped. The man of God, Elisha, was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely, everybody said completely, and you would have completely destroyed it, but now you will only defeat it three times. So how do I make my shots count? Look, if you want to know how to make food better, you can watch the Food Network. If you want to know how to improve your golf score, go learn from Tiger. You want to learn how to improve your life score? Let's learn from Elisha in this story. Four quick points. The first one is simply this. Avail your resources to God. Say, God, whatever I have is yours. Not, God, part of what I have. 100% of what I have is yours. How much of it are you going to let me keep to do things that I need to do? Everything I have is yours. Elisha said to him, get a bow and some arrows. Here's the point. God wants to involve you in a miracle in your community. God wants to involve you. and We always see this throughout the scriptures. God is wanting to get people involved in what it is he's doing. And so he begins with this idea of saying, go get a bow and some arrows. Uh, but Jehoash probably thinks, well, I don't know exactly what he's going to do with them. I'm not going to give you my bow and arrow until you tell me exactly what you want. It's not what Jehoash did. He simply did what Elisha challenged him to do. Sometimes we want to have all the answers. We want to have it all figured out. i got to tell you, I don't have it all figured out. But I have a sense of what God wants to do. And I want to be a part of what he wants to do. So God says, I want you to start this kingdom builders thing. And it's a, it's a whole new model for, for giving towards saturating your city and your world. And we see it's, it's, it's something that's springing up all over the world as, as churches are getting a heart to be about more than just therefore and no more, but really making a difference in the community. So when you say yes to God, you're saying, God, I'm available. I make my resources fully available to you, and I'm going to do so in a way that I'm completely trusting you. So I, I said a couple minutes ago that we saw our son this week. So Lori and I flew out to California, and uh, 
one of the things that he wanted to do for me for Christmas was to get me into my first pro hockey game. And he, he uh, one of his many hosting jobs is he hosts for the L.A. Kings, uh, an NHL hockey team. It was the first time I was ever one. How many of you have ever been in a pro hockey game before? My goodness, the energy in that arena could, could just about uh, compare with Memorial Stadium. There's a lot that goes on in there. And one of, the, one of the greatest hockey players of all time, Wayne Gretzky, is known famously for saying this line. He says this, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. My challenge today is make your shot count. Take your shot. If you don't take any shots, you're going to miss everything. Make your shot count. Right now, we have an opportunity. Let's make our shot count. The second point is this. Align your hands with God's larger hands. I'm going to ask uh, Richard and Caden, could you guys come up here and help me? I want you to come. Come stand up here. Okay, so Richard, you stand on this side. And Caden, can you stand on that side? Let's have a big hand for Richard and Caden. Yeah. So, Caden, uh, you're going to play the part of Whopper Jr. Okay? No. <laughs> you're, a, you're the king, and uh, you're, uh, you're coming to visit Elisha, and you're going to be Elisha, okay? That means you're godly. All right? So, it tells us in the story that Elisha said this to the king. He said, take the bow in your hands. All right, you got the bow in your hands. And then... It says, when the king had taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. So why don't you aim over that way, not towards people. Yeah, we're going to aim towards the east, so right up that way. You'll point him in the right direction. So this is what it says. It says, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. So the point is, we align our hands with God's larger hands. And the prophet was doing something in the natural to symbolize something in the spiritual. You realize a lot of times God is doing something in the natural, but he's speaking something in the spiritual realm. So by putting his hands on the king's hands, it was as if the man of God was saying to the king, you're not going to be doing this all on your own strength. And Elisha, in this sense, represents God's hands, and the King Jehoash represents our hands. And as the, as the king or the Lord's hands are on our hands, as our hands are aligned with his, we're still having to do some work. We'll still have to give. We'll sacrifice. We'll be going out. We'll be sharing the gospel. We'll be doing a lot of things. But it's God's big hands that are making the difference. It's not our hands. It's God's big hands. So we're aligning our hands with God's larger hands. And so I want to tell you the vision that we have this year for our church and through our church, it's a really big vision. But not a one of us can do it. It only happens as we say, God do it through us. That's why two weeks ago, we had a week of prayer. Because in that week of prayer, we're saying, God, this is just, this is just another way of doing something unless your hands, your larger hands are in it. So when we had the week of prayer, we were saying, God, help us. God, empower us. God, guide us. God, do what only you can do. The third point is this. Aim your heart for God's open windows. Aim your heart for God's open windows. So it tells us in verse 17 of our text, it said, open the east window, and he opened it. And then when he opened it, Elisha said, shoot. Elisha, wait, you got to say shoot. Say shoot really loud. One more time, really loud. Everybody help him out. One, two, three. And he shot. All right. And then Elisha shouted, the Lord's arrow of victory. The Lord's arrow of victory. I think we all can shout that together. One, two, three. The Lord's arrow of victory. Let's have a big hand for these guys.
awesome. So when a king was declaring war on another country, the culture was this. He would go to the boundary of that company, that country, and he would stand and he would fire an arrow in the direction of that that country or that land. Sometimes it would be an arrow across a river into another land. And he would shout out loud and he would make a declaration at that time of why he was going to war in that country. And that uh, that neighboring country or or land would have 30 days to decide what's go- what it's going to do. And during that 30 days, it could decide if it wanted to surrender. It would decide if it wanted to go to war. But it had a 30-day period. And if they wanted to try and avoid war many times, they would negotiate. So the prophet Elisha was telling the king, I have something that I want to do. And by me telling it to you, it's God has something that he wants you to do. And he wants to build your faith in it. He wants you to know that it's going to be much bigger than you can do. He wants you to know that it's going to be his hand on top of your hand that's making the difference. And he wants you to know that you need to aim for the open window. The direction that God wants to take our church this year, he he wants us to aim for an open window. Open windows can happen a lot of ways. Sometimes an open window happens when a government changes. When that happens gospel flows. I remember uh, when the wall came down in East Germany. Suddenly there was an opportunity for the gospel to begin to flow into that area which was very difficult to receive the gospel at all. I remember in uh, the early 90s when when uh, the Soviet Union's stronghold on everything seemed to uh, come crashing down in, in that part of the world in Asia and suddenly there were opportunities for the gospel to flow in like never before. It's an open window. Sometimes when you're at your weakest point, that's an open window because finally when we come to our weakest point, we let go and God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Sometimes when you face a job change, maybe it's unexpected, that might be an open window and that's a time when you can make your shot count. Sometimes, I found this true, is when there's a hospitalization in your life or in in that of a loved one. Many times it's an open window that God provides for you to step through, for you to be his, his voice, for you to be his arrow of victory into that area. It's an open window. When it's springtime, it's an open window to plant. The farmer who doesn't plant any seeds doesn't get any crops. So we want to be about planting seeds this year. It's part of the vision God's given us. And when it's fall, it's harvest time. And when it's kingdom builders, it's faith time. Elisha was saying, there's an open window. Shoot, and you'll completely take the city. Many years ago, when our son was still in school, I coached the basketball team he was on for two or three years. And after a game, whether we won or lost, after the game, a lot of times we would go to McDonald's or 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 Dairy Queen to have an ice cream cone after the game. Various team members would come. And it was interesting. There were always some team mes- members who really weren't very interested in the game. They weren't really interested in contributing to the game. All they were interested in was the Dairy Queen afterwards. I don't want to be a person in the house of God who is just not really interested in contributing, but just coming for heaven's version of Dairy Queen someday in the future. Some of us pose, but never shoot. Some of us promise but we never shoot. Some of us plan to, but we never shoot. Our challenge this year, friends, is make your shots count. The last observation is is simply this. TJ, you can come if you would, please. The point is this. Adhere your grip to God's uncompleted vision. Let's look at the story, and we'll find out what that means. It means hang on really tightly to God's 
vision, the vision he's given us, it's not yet completed. So it says in verse 18, Elisha says, take the arrows. After he shot the one, Elisha said, strike the ground. And he struck it three times and stopped. Elisha didn't tell him how many times to strike. He simply said, strike the ground three times. It's interesting that in this prophetic act that it impacted the physical outcome. So, so if, if you can picture this, here's Elisha, and he says to the king, strike the ground. In my interpretation, it's start shooting the arrows, start going, start doing something. He did a little for a while. That's awesome. He did three shots, then it says, then he stopped. Verse 19, it says this, the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground four or five times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely, everybody say completely, completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. By only striking the ground a little, they were setting themselves up for defeat down the road. By only striking the ground a little, they were missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime. By only being willing to contribute just some of his arrows, he missed out on so much. So here's a, here's a, a, a double portion prophet with a going halfway sort of king. And how do these come together? And I believe what God is saying is there's something supernatural he wants us to do in advance of our doing the actual thing. There's something supernatural. Maybe it's in making your kingdom builders commitment. What you'll say, with God's help, I'm going to put it down. That I'm going to shoot more than just three arrows. With God's help, I'm going to put it down. That I'm in this all the way. I don't want to be one of these, one of these kingdom guys who's got all these leftover arrows at the end of the day. Our vision is is to be able to completely finish remodeling the downstairs. I hope we have that done in the next couple of months. We want a place that's awesome for kids. Our vision is like this so that, so that we can reach and minister to a thousand kids every single week. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility at all. I, I could see a day when, when kids are streaming into our facilities, and they're being transformed and they're streaming out and they're bringing friends with them, and they're coming back into the facilities, and they're all being transformed, and they're all streaming back out, and it's multiplied exponentially. Oh, do you see the possibility? I see, I see a day when, when we've got so many kids coming to Royal Rangers and Impact or Revolution or Shelter during the, during the week that we just absolutely have no place to put them all. I don't see that as a bad problem. I see that as a good problem. I see that as a kingdom opportunity. But we've got to be willing to make our shot count. It comes right now. God's given us a vision to reach at least one soul every single day this year. We're going to count. We're going to keep track. We're going to say, God, with your help, we want to see souls saved constantly. People coming to Jesus. People who may be curious coming to Jesus because we together are going to take our shot. We have a vision to see the gospel of Jesus brought to every home in our community over the next three years. We want to take our shot. Now listen, hear me very carefully. You might be saying right now, I hear the vision, Pastor. I see the $604,000 goal. That's really expensive, Pastor. I'm going to say to you that the cost of inaction far outweighs the cost of becoming a kingdom builder. So I want to challenge you today. Let, let, the, let the grip on the vision get a hold of your heart, not just your mind. Let the, let the vision be seared into your soul in such a way that we can be a part of a, a movement, a kingdom building movement that our overseas missions doesn't slow down a bit. But our huge impact here continues to ripple out and bubble over. Will you be a part of it? Will you live your life each day as if it was your last day? Will you, let it, the, will you grip the vision and let it, let it grip you? all across this place. I, I want to invite you to take a moment now and if you received a Kingdom Builders card, if you had one in your project guide, 
Uh, I invite you to get one out. Lori, if you'd come up with me. Kingdom Builder commitment cards are also located between your feet at the bottom of your feet. Um, in just a moment, we're going we're gonna to celebrate together. Because that's the awesome thing about being part of a church family is we get to do this together. And uh, before we all come and celebrate together, I'm going to ask the, the choir to take their commitment cards and, and go ahead and, and put those in the a bucket and then uh, join us on the platform. And for this, could we have some house lights if, for a little bit, if we could? If you would take your Kingdom Builders card, whether it's in your project guide or, or you got one from between the seats at your feet, if you just take it and put it in your hands, just wave it at me so I know you've got it. We want everyone to have one. And you may say, well, I didn't come here today prepared or, or ready to make that commitment. That's all right. That's all right. We're all part of the family no matter where we're at. And what we're saying today is, is I want to be a part, I believe in, I support the vision that God's given us as a church. We're a church family. So we're going to take just a minute and, and pray. And if you haven't had a chance to fill this out, or, or maybe even during the message, God spoke something to your heart. I know when, when we approach this, we pray separately, and then we come together and say, okay, what's, what's God speaking to you? What's God speaking to you? Maybe you're like us, and God spoke something to you even during the message. And so we're just going to take a minute and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And if you haven't had a chance, or maybe you say, you know what, I didn't come here ready to make a commitment, but I'm going to pray. Or you know what, I want to begin to serve in BCC Kids Ministry. I want to be a part of what God's doing. So we're going to give you just a minute to pull that out. There's pins also between your seats, and, and, uh, and we're just going to listen to the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, would you speak to us? We'll do whatever it is you want us to do. We just ask that you'd speak. We want to be a part. We want to take our shots. Be a part of the vision. So you see on the back of the card where it says annual or monthly or weekly, and then an amount and a total, and then a place for your information. Friends, it's going to take all of us together doing. You say, well, my little bit doesn't matter. It's amazing what God can take when your little bit, my little bit, someone else's little bit, and God can do a lot. I mean, he put 5,000 people with two fish and a few loaves. I think he can take all our little bit and make an impact in our city and our world. So what we'd invite you to do now is this. In a, moment, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come forward. I'm not asking you to come forward to do anything other than say by coming forward, I'm, I'm in with the vision. Uh, I, I, I want you to, in a moment, to stand to your feet, and I want you to come all the way forward. I want to fill this area here completely, and we're going to stand here with our, with our uh, commitment cards in hand. But more importantly, even if you don't have a commitment card or can't turn one in today, that's, that's not what this is about. This is about saying, I'm in on the vision. And we would like 100%, all of us, to be able to come and stand around the front. So would you do that now? Would you join us? Would you stand up and come gather around the front? First people in, come as close as possible. Come on, join us. Come We're going to celebrate together. Come all the way in. Thank you so much. Come all the way forward. Make room for others behind you. Rather than slip out, let's say I'm in. And if you need to sit, you can come on up front and sit in the first two rows and join us. Come all the way forward. That's it. Come all the way in and make room for everybody. Come all the way in. Don't leave. The best part's about to happen.
to join with me and take your commitment card and you can just you can either raise it up or hold it over your heart as a way of saying, Lord, I'm, I'm giving to vision. I'm, I'm doing this with my heart. Even if your card is empty, even if you don't have a card with you, put your open hand over your heart if you're physically able. And by coming forward, you're saying, I'm in on the vision. I'm stepping into something. I'm stepping into something supernatural. I think about what could be, and then I think about what if we don't. Now is our time to make our shot count. Would you just repeat this prayer after me? And then the worship team is going to sing. And Lord, you want to give us instructions on that? Okay. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. For all you've blessed me with. For all you've blessed me with. It's come from your hands. It's come from your hands. Today I stretch. Today I stretch. I stretch my faith. I stretch my faith. To believe you. To believe you. For something really big. For something really big. In my church. In my church. In my community. In my community. And around my world. And around my world. Take my commitment. Take my commitment. My faith. My faith. Use it for your glory. Use it for your glory. Multiply it. Multiply it. Multiply it. Multiply it. Completely. Completely. So we will saturate. So we will saturate. Our city. Our city. And our world. And our world. With your heart. With your heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, can we just begin to celebrate what God said? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. These are water buckets because we're all going to carry the water to all the dry and thirsty places in our community. We're called to do that and around the world. So when you place your commitment card in one of these buckets or as you go, go out, there'll be ushers at the door. You're saying, I'm going to be a part of carrying water to a dry and thirsty ground. Can we just give God praise one more time? Yes, Lord. Yes, God.